Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sessa here with a video here today. We're gonna have a really cool video how actually how to create your own new logo, as well as actually a full-on revamp to kind of go with it. I do think a lot of the tips in this actual video is pretty like pretty insane to be fair with you. I had a really good look. I mean, hopefully I just show it like right now or something like that. But as you can see, the revamp itself is actually really inspired by or I guess influenced by the actual logo that you end up making in this video. So I mean, as you can see, like just it's gonna be a super fun video. It's also kind of like if you guys didn't watch my other previous video on how to actually make your full-on stream revamp or something like that. Their videos are kind of similar in their sense, but they're completely different vibes and different takes on it. So if you guys want to like check this one out, and if you haven't checked the other one out, be sure to do so. You can combine some ideas from those as well. Um, overall, I think you guys will really like this video. And uh, yeah, I mean, love you guys so very much. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Enjoy. All right, homie. So I'm going to start off with nice, cool, simple tricks into nailing a temporary or a quick logo for your streams. Now, one of my favorite things to actually do when I'm actually sketching out my logos is Googling the word shields and taking some of my favorites and actually redesigning them. Keep in mind, if you're new and or just didn't really think about it, of course, a shield is 99% perfectly mirrored most of the time. So a little trick with this is really honestly, just keep focusing on one side only because all you have to do afterwards is simply take another copy of it and flip it. And of course, do not be afraid to stretch and move around the actual shape itself because you never know if you, got, if you might like it being more elongated or more vertically tall or something like that. You actually do not know until you know is what I like to say. Just do it and then you, you, you never know. So you might find something you actually really like. Now, for things you're gonna be running into, when you're looking to make your second half of the shield, be sure to use a rectangle shape and go down the halfway mark of your first half's vector. Then you wanna make sure you select both the first half and the rectangle shapes by holding shift to select multiple pieces and use the shape builder tool or for a shortcut, it's shift M on your keyboard. And while holding alt on your keyboard, you wanna click and delete all the non-perfect vertical line and extra pieces. Then to duplicate the next half, you simply just wanna hold alt on your keyboard, select the shape and drag it over then you can simply right click on the second half's piece and use reflect, then choose the vertical option and press OK. Be sure to also line up the bottom anchor points to make sure it fits perfectly. And whenever you'd like to have these two separate halves be a full shape, just go to Windows, Pathfinder, and use the first shape mode option and then you just see it's going to be connecting, you're good to go. And to finalize the first step of the logo is be sure to actually not be afraid to take your shields and shrink and enlarge them in different ways, vertically and horizontally, and you actually might find a new shape that you like way better. Now, either if you actually drew these concepts on paper or went straight to vectoring it like I did, turning a shield shape into a stroke is very simple. All you do is turn off the fill layer on the bottom left, making sure you actually select the shield layer first and click on the square right behind it, that is the actual stroke layer, and then all you have to do is just choose a color then, using the stroke table found under Windows in the toolbar, and you can make it larger and even change the position to be either on the inside or the outside. Then, simply over and over again, sketching different ways to actually fit your given letter inside. Even if it looks terrible to you, just getting it on paper or vectoring and sketching it like I am will just help you think differently. And for the sake of the video and maybe just some of your first times actually designing a logo, just keep your letters very simple and straight line so that the following techniques that I give you in the video are going to be super easy for you to actually follow. All right, guys, I think it's a pretty good time for me to actually jump in for you guys and actually show you guys how to actually get your nice little vector going on with your sketch that you've chosen. Now, this, of course, is my sketch that I've chosen. And I want to show you guys really quickly because you guys are going to run into this problem is, of course, when you're actually using Illustrator, usually a lot of people, what they like to do is uh, I'm going to use the direct selection tool, by the way, here. When it comes to using the direct selection tool, I just like to press A a lot when I select different objects. So to bring up the free transform, you actually have to, when you click on the object, hold control. So keep that in mind, right? So when I hold shift is while I'm holding control, you'll see that if I just rotate, it rotates on a perfect 45 degree angles each time. So obviously if I drive this over here, this is not a perfect 45 degree angle. So to actually get your perfect angle, what I like to do is I like to take my pen tool, right? It's like the inside of this line here, just like so I kind of follow the exact path. You'll see if I click and hover over the path, it does say the word path. I'm gonna click, then to select both the actual anchor points, as you can see, this was not selected. I'm gonna hold Control and Alt and click on that anchor point that I just made, just like so. Now you can see both of them are now selected. Then I'm gonna hold Control once again, click on my anchor point that I just made, move it over, and you'll see now I have a nice perfect line that's outside the canvas. Now I wanna hold Control again. Now if you can see, if it's not actually allowing you to hold Control again, click off with pressing A on your keyboard, direct selection tool, clicking off, then highlighting it again, and then press control. Nice little glitch for Illustrator, don't know why, for whatever reason, right? When you hold control, I'm gonna zoom out for a little bit, hold control, I'm gonna hold shift and alt, take my anchor point on the right-hand side, 
just simply just stretch it, right? And not my anchor point, but just really, I'm just clicking on the right hand side of this tree uh, free transform box, hold the control and shift, and I'm moving it up and control alt shift, sorry, so like making it super awkward for you. Literally just holding control alt and shift and making it bigger. You'll see the line is now bigger. I'm gonna make sure I overstretch it because I wanna make sure I have more space that I need, right? Then if I press I on my keyboard, it's the iron dropper tool. And within Illustrator, it also does not just take your color, but also takes whether if it's a path or actual shape. In this case, this is a path. So I'm gonna click on it. It'll make it into a nice path for me. But the best thing about this is it's gonna make it the perfect width that we actually need. And actually make this now path into a shape. All you have to do is go to where it says Object, Expand, Fill and Stroke, make sure those are both selected. Press OK. And now we are good to actually move into taking these shapes and putting them inside. And uh, yeah, that's just making the perfect line because you're going to run into that problem. I'm saving you. Now, also before moving into actually putting the shapes, these lines, I guess, inside, we want to make sure that, of course, there's an even amount of space between the actual uh, our little A, our letter A and the actual shape. Um, so that case, what we're going to do here is actually going to take a duplicate of our little shape here, right here, right? This little shield shape. I'm gonna take this, then I'm gonna actually go to where uh, my color is. I'm actually gonna make it a gray tone, a very simple gray that I, I can at least see and I can also just navigate through in between, right? So I'm also gonna go to my stroke options and go to where it says alignment. Right now my alignment on my actual shield is on the outside. If yours is on the inside, you can just keep it on the inside and just make your actual width bigger. But for me, I'm also gonna put my alignment just straightly on the inside. And since I've done that, I already have the perfect width of uh, the same exact width that's here. It's gonna be the same exact width in here. And it's gonna be again, the same exact width as my actual shape. So everything's gonna be nice and perfect and nice and easy to go for. So I'm actually gonna make sure I lock that layer, that the gray layer, so it doesn't annoy me. But now what I can do is I can just take my lines I can just measure them right on this line, just like so. And now I can just go ahead and flip this by using right click, transform, uh, reflex, vertical, press OK. Then I'll take this side and make sure I line that up. Now that's lined up there. I'll do the same thing here. I should also probably delete this, huh? Like I don't actually need this line anymore since I know exactly where I'm going. There we go. Now that I have that, that, and that good, we can actually go ahead, and I think I just left it kind of empty for a little bit there. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make it to the bottom, since I really, I didn't really figure out the bottom, right? The bottom was just basically uh, what it was. So just go back over here. The bottom was just kind of empty and kind of floating. What am I gonna do to stop that? I'm just gonna probably go ahead and say, let's just make this kind of just go through for now, and uh, call that like a day there. We'll do the same thing on this side over here. So I'm gonna click on this actual uh, anchor point right there and kind of go through that anchor point right there. And let's just say it stops there just for now. But basically to cut all these shapes out in between, I'm just gonna uh, click on one by holding the direct section tool, clicking shift, clicking on each single one, then go to the shape builder tool. And we're just gonna take this and just basically delete all the outside stuff that of course is not a part of our logo. And I'm also gonna highlight now these two things because these are options where it came to uh, the stroke, right? That we just made to kind of cut it off here. Now we kind of, kind of have that cut off right there. Now I don't actually have a perfect line yet. But I'm just gonna make a nice perfect horizontal line. I'm gonna hold I, click on this, give me that perfect stroke option. Go to options here, expand, fill and stroke, press OK. Then I'm gonna take this, put this right in the middle. Use my shape builder tool by selecting, of course, all these other shapes by holding shift again. Then shape builder tool, delete, delete. And now I got myself, I just get rid of this get rid of this. I don't know what I'm going to do in the empty space here, but for now, I think for tutorial reasons, I can go into and kind of fix it, or I would say do something with the bottom, um, but maybe I'll just do it off camera, but for now, I'm going to keep it like this, but this is basically this sketch right here, you know, made a lot better, <laughs> obviously, and you can actually say, this actually looks pretty sick here, um, and I'm actually a fan of it, so we're actually going to end up using this, and we're going to move into actually Photoshop to uh, get ourselves a good old, just like very simple, very clean, but a new kind of method for me, that's it from our past video. Uh, yeah, that'll just make it look good. And also keep in mind, by the way, guys, when it comes to like these shapes here, let's just say you wanna do a few other ones that you like, like you just, let's just say for shits and giggles, you like this K logo and you wanna do a K logo for whatever reason, right? And uh, you go into it, you just, you know, you, you get to this part here, try, delete the shape itself and you might have made a, a really cool logo because of the shape of the shield of mass, the fact that of course there is a kind of sh a shield shape going on with the letter that you chose. So maybe you can use this and be like, yo, this is my logo right here. Screw the shield. I just use a shield to kind of use it as a kind of a template. So keep that in mind, but basically this is your nice little logo and we're gonna move on to Photoshop and end the video over there. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this kind of portion over here. Let's just move on.
All right guys, moving into Photoshop, you definitely wanna have some sort of plan when it comes to color scheme. For me, I already had ideas of colors that I wanted to use, but for those who need a little more help, using this really cool site called Color is a super easy way to get like, I guess a lot of colors to get seen really easily. All you have to do is actually select the color you wanna keep locked, and you just keep searching for your secondary color, or colors. There's also no sponsor being involved here, I'm just saying, if you guys are looking for some easy way to kinda of get some colors, it's a pretty cool site that I use pretty rarely, but I, when I do need some help, I definitely do use it. Okay, so moving into designing the setup, it was completely based on allowing your actual new shield type logo to take charge. I ended up centering my logo towards the left hand side and then used the rectangle marquee tool to also hug the left hand side and stop right in the middle of my logo. To then use on a new layer the right click fill option on my primary color, which for my case it was actually the orange. Then with the eraser tool, I just got rid of the rest of the actual orange on the left hand side that was inside my logo. That way we have a really clean and seamless transition for our logo to actually sit in. Then following that, I wanted to make my own pattern. Using the library option under windows and making sure I have a logo selected, I choose the option create from image right under the plus button. Then I went over to the last option and lowered the scale to the logo's space and appropriate amount. And for me, that happened to be about 0.05. Then all you have to do is we should click on save to CC libraries and you got yourself a really dope pattern just solely based on your logo. Now before putting my pattern on, I just simply wanted to set up a nice little text for me uh, based on what slide I was actually using. In this case, I was doing the offline screen. Then I went back to my libraries and clicked on my pattern and chose a size that I thought had a good enough amount of logos on my screen. After to set up the last part, I made my pattern to a smart object and applied a gradient layer style with my primary color being on the left hand side and then my background color being on the right hand side. Then all you have to do is change the angle to where your primary color is on one side and your other color is basically fading out towards the offline and or whatever text screen you might have. And to continue with the smart logo transition, I used a layer mask on my smart object pattern and use black to basically erase away all the stuff that's inside my logo as well. And you got yourself your first screen of however many you need, but it looks super freaking good. Now I know because a lot of you guys are gonna be interested in how you actually create a camera spot for your intermission screen, it's super simple actually. I'd literally just take the actual offline screen PSD that you just made and just add a new layer to it. And with this new layer, you just wanna quick fill any color in whatsoever by just literally pressing control and backspace. Then all you have to do is size down this new layer that's also going to be automatically 1920 by 1080p because that is exactly the actual size of your document size, 1920 by actual 1080. Following that, just move everything else and rename the text and change the titles and all that good stuff for it to of course fit the intermission vibe. And yeah guys, that's pretty much the end of the video here today that I have for you guys. Um, I truly think it's a, I think it's gonna be really, really helpful for a lot of you guys, especially you guys are not too tech savvy in the sense of uh, how to actually work and move around Photoshop or even Illustrator itself. I try to make it as point to point as possible so that way you guys can easily like pause the video, rewind and make sure you guys get all the steps being like as they should be so you don't really miss anything and or get stuck or lost anywhere. Um, you guys let me know if this video still helps you guys and if you guys, didn't, if I didn't, well, I believe I said it already in the beginning of the video, but uh, yeah, if you haven't check out the other video please want to do so i'll put in the information panels in like the top right of the screen um but yeah love you guys so i i also wanted to say the fact that i actually recently have hit my highest peak of how many subscribers i've gotten a month and it's only getting like larger and bigger so all the people that are coming in here that are new i appreciate you guys so immensely it's 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 ridiculous i'll talk to you guys later i love you sesame hq out do not forget to keep smiling stay positive and stay freaking productive guys later and much love